prostate cancer treatment. What happens after that initial diagnosis? We're talking about targeted therapies, the ones that are changing the game for so many people. So if you're ready to explore the world of lutetium, PSMA, actinium, and even these really promising antibody therapies, you're in the right place. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's make sure we're all on the same page. You're gonna hear the terms nuclear oncology and theragnostic thrown around a lot, and they can sound kind of intimidating. Yeah. But trust me, they're not as complicated as they sound. I think it would help if you could give us like a quick breakdown. What do those terms actually mean in plain English? Sure, so nuclear oncology at its core is using radioactive materials to diagnose and treat cancer. And then they're agnostics. That takes it a step further. It combines those diagnostic tools like special imaging with the actual treatment. I see. So you're not just getting a picture of what's going on. You're also delivering the therapy directly where it needs to go all in one. It's like having a roadmap and a delivery system all in one. Exactly. That's a great analogy. Thanks. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Good. But how does this actually play out in like real life? What does it mean for the person who's actually going through this? Well, think about it this way. Oh. Traditional treatments like chemo, they kind of hit everything, even the healthy cells. Yeah. But with this targeted approach, we're zeroing in on the cancer cells themselves. So less collateral damage. Exactly. It's all about precision. And that's where PSMA comes in, right? You got it. Prostate-specific membrane antigen. Yes. It's like putting a giant target right on those prostate cancer cells. Exactly. And we're getting better and better at developing these like super precise molecules that act like guided missiles mm -hmm. going straight for that target. That's a great way to put it. I try. So one of those guided missiles that we've heard a lot about is Lutetium PSMA, also called Lu-177, or sometimes Povicto. Right. It's been around for a bit now since 2015, so we're starting to get a pretty good picture of what it can do. We are. And what should people expect realistically if they're considering this treatment? So basically about a third of patients, they see incredible results, like a dramatic shrinkage of the tumor. Wow, that's amazing. It is. Then you have another third who sees some benefit, maybe their disease stabilizes. Okay. And then unfortunately there's that final third who don't respond as well as we'd hoped. I and see. a lot of that variation comes down to individual factors, how aggressive the tumor is, how quickly their PSA is doubling, things like that. That makes sense. Even the stage of the cancer and where it's spread can make a difference. So it's not as simple as, here's the treatment, everyone will have the same outcome. Right. It's really about personalized medicine. Which is what we're all about. That's exactly. So if someone out there is thinking about Lou 177, they should definitely have a very open, honest conversation with their doctor. Absolutely. That's crucial. Now, another big conversation around Lou 177 is the timing of it all. Yeah. Like, when is the optimal time to actually use it? Is it better to do it earlier in the disease process or wait until later? I know that's a hot topic. It is a hot topic. There's no easy answer. Right. There are definitely pros and cons to consider. What are some of the like the risks and benefits of using it earlier rather than later? Well, we're seeing some really encouraging signs that using Lu-177 earlier, potentially even before chemo, might be more effective in the long run. Interesting. But of course, we always have to weigh the potential risks against the benefits. While serious side effects aren't as common, we always keep a close eye on things like bone marrow health. Right. That makes sense. And we have to have those open and honest conversations about those potential impacts. It's like walking a tightrope, you know? Right. Trying to find that balance between maximizing the effectiveness and minimizing the risks. Exactly. And this is also where the research on combination therapies is really exciting. Combination therapies. Yes. So instead of just using Lu-177 on its own, we're looking at how it can work together with other treatments, okay. like PRRP inhibitors or certain types of chemo. So like double team the cancer. Exactly. We can p potentially boost the effectiveness by hitting it from multiple angles. So instead of one guided missile, it's like a two-pronged attack. You got it. I like it. We've covered a lot about Lu-177. We have. But what about these other options out there? I know actinium is generating a lot of buzz, especially in cases where maybe Lu-177 hasn't been as successful. Yeah, that's right. So what's the deal with actinium? How does it compare to Lu-177, both in how well it works and the side effects? Well, actinium, it's definitely a more potent 
therapy. Okay. It's what we call an alpha emitter. Which means? It means it delivers a much more powerful dose of radiation compared to LU-177. Oh, wow. Okay. And we're seeing some really remarkable results, especially in patients who haven't had chemotherapy yet. So it's like the heavy hitter. You could say that. But with great power comes great responsibility, right? Exactly. What about the side effects? Are we talking about a whole different ball game I, with actinium? Well, because it's more potent, we do have to be extra cautious. Of course. Particularly when it comes to things like salivary gland function and kidney function. Okay, so those are areas to watch out for. Yes, definitely something to monitor closely. It's all about finding that sweet spot, right? Absolutely. Maximizing the impact on the cancer cells while minimizing anything unwanted happening in your body. Precisely. A delicate balance, for sure. It is. And I know there's another one on the horizon. We've heard whispers about lead 212. Yes. It's like the new kid on the block. Yeah. What's the latest there? Is that something that's ready for prime time, or is it still early days? It's still pretty early in the research phase for prostate cancer. Okay. It is another type of alpha emitter, though. Interesting. But it has some unique properties that make it really promising. So lots of potential avenues to explore. Absolutely. There's so much more to explore, especially when it comes to this whole new wave of antibody therapies. Oh, definitely. Now those, those are exciting. And that's exactly where we're headed next. Can't wait. Antibody therapies, they really are like the next generation of targeted treatment, like we were talking about with those guided missiles, but even more precise. Okay, so I get that they're promising, but how do they actually work? We were talking about radioactive materials before. Is that still the case with antibodies? So think of antibodies like um, like a key searching for its lock. But in this case, the lock is a specific target on a cancer cell. Each antibody is designed to find and attach to that target, and that's where it does its work. Interesting. So it's not just about delivering radiation. It's about finding the exact right cells to deliver it to. Exactly. And because antibodies can circulate in your system for a longer time compared to some other therapies, we can potentially use higher doses of radiation without causing as much damage to healthy cells. So more bang for your buck, but with less collateral damage. You got it. It's all about maximizing the impact on a cancer while minimizing the impact on you. And I imagine that's where the side effects come in. Of course. Every treatment has potential side effects. And with antibodies, we always keep a close eye on bone marrow health. Makes sense, since we're still talking about radiation here. Exactly. But the good news is, antibodies are generally well tolerated. That's reassuring to hear. And we monitor everything closely with regular blood work, just to be safe. Always better to be safe than sorry. Now this is all very promising, but where are we at right now with antibody therapies for prostate cancer? Are these treatments that are available now, or are we talking about something for the future? Right now, we're in a really exciting phase of research. There are a number of antibody therapies in clinical trials. Okay, so it's still being studied, but promising enough to be in trials. Exactly. One of the trials that I think is particularly interesting is using lutetium-labeled antibodies. We'll be watching that closely. Now, before we move on, I want to make sure we address something that I know is on a lot of people's minds. PSMA negative prostate cancer. Right, of course. For a while there, it seemed like if you didn't have that PSMA target, Targeted therapies were kind of off the table. Yeah, that was a challenge for a while, but the good news is research is moving beyond PSMA. So there's hope for those patients. Absolutely. We're finding new targets all the time. For example, there's something called Bombacin. Bombacin? That's a new one. It's also known as the gastrin-releasing peptide receptor, and it's found on some PSMA-negative prostate cancer cells. Okay, so it's like a different kind of target. Exactly. And then there are also GRPR antagonists, which work by blocking signals that trigger cancer growth. So even if traditional PSMA target therapies aren't an option, it doesn't mean there's nothing left in the arsenal. Exactly. That's the key takeaway here. We've covered so much ground today, from LU-177 to actinium, antibodies, even these new targets for PSMA-negative prostate cancer. Yeah. It's a lot to take in, for sure. It really is. But if there's one thing I want listeners to walk away from this conversation with, it's that the future of prostate cancer treatment is all about personalization. Couldn't agree more. It really is about moving away from that one-size-fits-all approach and finding what works best for each individual. Exactly. And the exciting thing is, it's not just about personalization. We're also seeing a real shift towards combination therapies. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that, like using multiple treatments together. Right. Just like combination therapies have been so effective in other cancers, like lung cancer, we're learning how to combine different therapies strategically for prostate cancer. So hitting it from all sides. 
Precisely. We can target different pathways, different mechanisms to really pack a punch. Like instead of just one tool in the toolbox, we've got this whole set of instruments that we can use and we're getting better at figuring out which ones work best together. Especially when it comes to your health. Ask questions, speak up, and make sure you understand your options. And don't be afraid to get a second opinion. Exactly. It's your health, your journey.